hi everyone and welcome to subsurface 23 hope you guys are having a good time here so i'll i'll quickly share my screen and start the presentation all right okay so um, yeah today we're going to talk about uh, data transfer from databases and data stores and how basically the apache aero ecosystem and particularly how aero flight sql really brings in those advantages with large data transfer yeah so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm currently a developer advocate here at Dremio as part of the technical evangelism team. Um, I, I kind of help people like data engineering teams and researchers to like understand about lake houses and various open source projects around that. I work pre predominantly in the area of like large scale data transfer with uh, projects like Apache Iceberg, Apache Arrow, Nessie, you know, that helps people build modern data analytical solutions. And my background is kind of like BI and machine learning and, and that's pretty much about me. So we will start with some um, uh, future options, like what, what if we could have these for our data transfer, right? What option do we have to meet those requirements? And we will do a quick intro about Apache Arrow and talk about why Arrow isn't just enough. And then we will introduce Arrow Flight and understand how Arrow Flight itself isn't just enough. And finally, we'll come to our topic, which is Arrow Flight SQL, and talk about what Flight SQL brings to the table and you know various other scenarios as well. So Let's talk about an ideal best case world, right? Where we have the following things for our data transfer. Uh, first, you know, the standardized API. So it doesn't matter what system you're using or what language you're using, you have a standardized set of APIs, which makes it easier to develop stuff, right? And there is no need for different drivers right now. Uh, you know, right now, if you have to connect to any system in any data store, you need to get the system driver, which means you also need to manage them. And, you know, if you're in a centralized IT team, that can be such a pain, right? So what if you could use a standardized API and actually have just one single driver? And obviously, performance is a huge aspect, specifically when you're dealing with a lot of data. Uh, we need responses to be pretty quick, so that's not something you can trade off easily. As well as along with that high performance, at some point, you're going to saturate a single network connection. So we want to do those parallel data transfer, both one to many as well as many to many, right? Um, and you optimally want this to be easy. It's not just the standardized API and all the remaining stuff, but we also want this to be easy to be implemented on both the server and the client side, which helps in adoption and ultimately makes it the standard. So if we kind of look from those requirements, why don't ODBC and JDBC fit in today's kind of analytical world, right? Why don't it fit those requirements? Uh, well, the reason is that these were built back in the older time. ODBC was built in 1992 and JDBC in 97. And they're just inherently robust because they are a product of their environment, right? And back then, basically, most of them were robust, or certainly a vast majority of them were robust. Uh, and it did some good things, right? It prevented the um, you know the many-to-many client-to-database kind of API mapping, but also it solved only half of a problem. It resulted in one to many database protocols. So for every data store that you have, each one has its own JDBC and ODBC driver. So that's a pain. But if we look at it today, right, the world isn't row-based uh, you know, anymore. Now with OLAP analytics, uh, specifically with huge volume of data, you want to go columnar, right? And most of the tools involved in the OLAP workload that at least process this non-negligible amount of data are also columnar to take advantage of those same benefits uh, that has to be provided by the columnar standard. Right? But there is no columnar transfer standard, right? When you're transferring that columnar data, there is no standard for transferring that data. Um, and as you can see in this particular diagram here, we have a column and you know we got to convert it into row over because we are sending it via ODBC or JDBC and then convert it back to column in the client side again. So why do we need to do that? Like this process can take anywhere from 60 to 90% 90 90 of the time uh, of that particular transfer process, right? Uh, and why? Because of the serialization and deserialization on the client and server side. Uh, which, as you can see here, is totally unnecessary. I mean, there is no reason we have to do it. So if you look at it, well, columnar is really the standard now, and certainly in, you know, OLAP analytics world. But what if you could have a columnar-based transfer framework where you don't need to do that row-based conversion, right? So what options do we have to actually keep things columnar, right? One, we can do like a custom protocol thing, right? You know, you can build a custom connector for each client and server. You can write code for each of the client and server. And they would need to basically implement it, right? And that would be performing, obviously. But you will end up with a many-to-many -many kind of mapping in that case. So if you look at kind of a comparison, right? You know, uh, that this matrix that I have presented is that we lose that standardized client, client interface. Uh, we lose that standardized client database interface. Uh, we also lose the standardized server interface in this custom implementation. But we will prevent the unnecessary ser serialization and deserialization, which is good. Uh, but that's really where Aeroflight comes in and kind of bridges that gap. Right. So if we took, take a look at how we can keep this in columnar, right? That's really where Arrow Flight comes in. And you know, so if the database is already columnar, converting into Arrow is generally pretty quick. And we can just keep it in Arrow format all the way to the client, as you can see in this diagram. 
So now we don't need to pay that 60 to 90 percent, you know, cost with serialization and deserialization, uh, resulting in much higher performance. Not to mention the performance that you gain out of transferring the data in columnar standard, right? That's that's an added adv advantage as well. Uh, so you get things like compression and those kind of, uh, you know, added benefits with this kind of, uh, you know, having a columnar standard. But before we go to the Aeroflight, I quickly wanted to do a recap about Apache Aero because that's what we are setting the base upon. So Aero, you might have heard a lot about it in the past few, like, you know, past few years. It's an in-memory columnar format and, you know, it includes various libraries to work with the format. Uh, it's really a polyglot format, right? So, you know, 12 languages supported today and there are more supports happening specifically in the Go ecosystem and Python as well. And it was co-created by Dremio and Wes McKenney a while ago. Uh, interestingly, it started as Dremio's internal memory format. So, and there has been just this crazy rapid adoption, you know, not to mention the capability growth and its integration with various tools. So if you can see in the image here, you really see an exponential growth of the downloads of the Python package, of which is Pyro. Uh, and this is really amazing, you know, even for my personal workloads. So also the tools that kind of support this uh, Arrow ecosystem is also skyrocketing, right? This is not even a comprehensive list, but you can see quite a few well-known projects like, you know, Dremio, DuckDB, Spark, uh, Pandas, and, you know, TensorFlow and stuff. So with that said, you know, the question is, isn't Arrow enough, right? You know, why do we need something else when Arrow is there? And really the key is that Arrow is prim primarily geared towards those operation on data in a single node. But there is no specification for like across network transfer, right? So it's more like both for like within a cluster, if you're doing things like shuffling, as well as for client server transfer. And that's really the problem Arrow Flight kind of sets out to solve, okay? Uh, that it basically is a network transfer for Arrow specific data. So now you have the Arrow format, but now you have the standard to like transfer that data over the wire, okay? So let's quickly go into, you know, what is Arrow Flight? Uh, so it's a general purpose client server framework to simplify high performance transport of basically any kind of large data over network interfaces. And it really is designed for data in the modern world, right? Uh, we went through how kind of basically uh, we have data in the columnar standard and not even on the disk, like, but even when it's in memory and processing and it has results to send back to your client and is often columnar, right? And, and at a minimum, you can take advantage of the columnar benefits of the data transfer. So it's column oriented and as well as that I mentioned before on compressibility, you know, and those kind of stuff. But the arrow format is specifically designed for high compressibility and large number of rows. So these are the two things that kind of are really good for efficient data transfer. And it really makes including client side in the distributing computing model easier, right? Uh, again, there has never been a silver bullet and likely will never be that, uh, you know, we can't do everything with every solution. Uh, for example, like, you know, your database can do a lot of things, right? But it's not still going to be able to do like 100%. Like, you know, let's say you have some complex machine learning, right? Your SQL database or your core business data lake is not going to be able to do that. So what we can do is we can do some processing and we can do some filtering and pre-aggregation and stuff. And you can minimize the amount of data that you kind of load on the you know computing side. So it really brings your client into the more of the distributed computing model. And let's say your client is a parallel Spark cluster. Uh, so your client is, isn't just a single machine, right? It's a, it's a cluster. So it really makes that distributed computing and using the best tool for the job much easier and better. Also, it enables parallel data transfer. So that's another important thing and interesting thing. So let's say you want to do machine learning using Spark, but you have your core business data stored in the data lake, right? And you access it by something like, let's say, Dremio. Well, what Aeroflight enables is it lays the foundation to have your smart cluster. So let's say 100 node access your Dremio cluster. And let's say 100 nodes do, you know, kind of they do kind of like a node to node communication. So you get that 100 times throughput, even above what it already provides serially. So that's a great use case as well. And I mean, if you see the performance results, and these aren't even the serial results, you can just see the crazy difference in general, right? Uh, typically, this is great with large number of records. As you can see, with lower number of records, the differences aren't that great, obviously, because this is, the, this is for higher and larger volume of data. So we can see the difference that we kind of talked about. So if we kind of take a visual representation of what that kind of looks like, this is the one-to-one, one-to-many parallel data transfer, okay, where you have client on the right-hand side, and it's actually retrieving the data from a full cluster, so the cluster doesn't have to send all of the data to one node and be bottlenecked on that just for the transfer, which even serially like would still be faster with Aeroflight, but you can actually do this parallelly, right? So you can actually have all of your different network connection over here and you know get that distributed computing model over here. So that all sounds cool. And the question is, are we done? Like is Aeroflight, I mean, Aeroflight is basically the standard that will help us you know, transfer that data of columnar data or the arrow data over the wire. But is it, isn't Aeroflight enough? That's the question. Uh, but if we go back again and look at this particular metrics we talked about, 
Uh, we can see how Flight standardizes the client interface, which is great. However, the thing it doesn't do is it doesn't standardize the client database access interface. Okay, and we will go through that in a moment. But it also standardizes the server interface and prevents that unnecessary serialization and deserialization, which we talked about. So we are almost there. You know, we still need to standardize the client database access interface, but you know, we are almost there. So that's 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 a good start. So with Aeroflight, the way it is built is that it is designed for this arbitrary bytes. You know, so the server is going to send the results, and is made to be dynamic. So it can send anything, right? Because who knows what you might be sending, right? And you want to be able to support that, so that the byte stream really only has meaning for a particular server that's chosen to support it, right? So you kind of have to negotiate that outside of Aeroflight, and you can see basically the byte and how it works. But we have to negotiate that kind of how to interpret those byte on the client side. So, for example, if you send something to Dremio, like we are going to interpret that byte stream to be a UTF-8 SQL query string, okay? But if you were to send that to a different system, like some other, like you know, uh, client system or some, you know, some other stores, they might interpret that totally differently. So that's really what we need to standardize. You know, that is how do you communicate specifically around databases and SQL access, which ODBC and JDBC already does that today, right? So another example is like catalog information. So, all right, give me a list of the tables and, you know, uh, databases and all those kind of stuff. Well, that's not part of it, but you can do it, but different systems are going to interpret it differently. So we don't end up with the same fragmentation we were trying to avoid in the first place. And if we just take a step back, haven't we seen those problems before with the custom protocol? And the answer is yes, we have. And in fact, how we have really solved was using the ODBC and JDBC protocol. Like they standardize the database activities, right? And they have this standardized API call for like, you know, how to submit the query and get the results back and those kind of manipulations. So if we kind of take a page out of the ODBC and JDBC book of standardizing those API call, that's exactly what Aeroflight SQL aims to solve, okay? So now let's talk about what Aeroflight SQL is. So it's a protocol for interacting with SQL databases built on top of Aeroflight, okay? So we are not replacing anything that Aeroflight did, to be honest. We are just actually building on top of it. And what we get there for is we have all the advantages that we discussed until now. So it allows databases to use Aeroflight protocol for transfer, but it also standardizes the thing that we talked about to make it easy for client side, you know, and also not result in having so many different protocols, right? And of course it leverages the performance benefit that Aero and Aeroflight provides for your database access. So it's super fast. So if you look at it more concretely, what it really is, is it is a set of commands to standardize a SQL interface on flight. So for example, it standardizes things like how do you do query execution, right? How do you submit a query and get the results back? And specifically, you can do things like prepared statement and those kind of things. Also things like catalog we talked about before. How do you actually access the metadata around the tables, columns, et cetera, and those things. And more importantly, the SQL syntax capabilities, right? Uh, you know, although, um, you know, even if you have a standard interface today, even with ODBC and JDBC, different databases support different subset of SQL syntax, right? Uh, and sometimes they even do extra thing on top of that. So these standards are basically provided by Flight SQL, okay? And one of the really nice thing here, and it's the same with Arrow or Arrow Flight uh, for that matter, is that it, it is language and database agnostic. So this is great in terms of getting the benefits of the API, regardless of the language you're using. So you could use any kind of language, it's Python, Go, Rust, whatever it is. So what this also means is that if you're implementing this once on the client side, let's say we're accessing using Python, uh, we implement that once, and you can connect to any Flight SQL server that has their endpoint open. So like any server that implements the flight SQL side, now the client can talk to that particular flight SQL endpoint, okay? And clients can now interface with database uh, implementing that protocol. So for example, if you're using something like Tableau, normally in the Tableau screen, you see a list of the connectors, right? You see a lot of connectors over there. Well, with flight SQL, what that list of connector becomes, it is just connect to data, right? There is no different connectors, like many to many connectors. And there isn't the choose a database or data store, you know, the figuring out what drivers to download. And, you know, even if you download something, you will have to manage them over a period of time, which becomes really cumbersome and, you know, it's it kind of really expensive. You know, it's a technical debt as well. So if you look at this diagram, you know, this will be like, you know, let's take an example. For example, I want to list a table with arrow flights, right? So the client is basically going to say, hey, you know, use the get flight info, you know, uh, API. And that's basically arrow flight SQL. So anything you see in this particular diagram that is not bold is just Aeroflight. And all the bold, bold font that you see is Aeroflight SQL. So as you can see here, we are not replacing anything that Aeroflight does. It just standardizes it, saying, hey, um, you know, it's a get table command. And the database know, okay, I, want, I know what the client wants, and I want to get it back to the client as soon as I can. 
So now I want to, if I want to query a table, you know, you can use the same standard protocol. Uh, you just have to use a command statement query, as you can see in this diagram. And you can supply all your parameters and configuration details, and it will get the data for you on the client side. So here's a list of the flight SQL command that I thought might be just to give an idea of like what things you can do, like things like metadata request, and even things like primary key, getting the primary key for a database, and you know the query side command and prepare statement and those kind of stuff. So these are a couple of the you know flight SQL command that already are there as of now. Okay, so here we are again, right? Are we are we done yet, right? And, and as you can see in this particular metrics, like the main four requirements that we talked about are all checked with Aeroflight, right? And the answer is mostly we are done, right? And the only reason I kind of say mostly and not a definitive yes is because we basically want to make it easier to adopt Flight SQL today, right? We want to provide all the benefits of Flight SQL as much as we can, but not everything support Flight SQL today, right? Again, it's a fairly new thing, and specifically in the BI world, right? It's going to take some time to widely adopt it, and even with machine language libraries. Uh, so it's kind of new to them as well, right? You know, this is a new interface. All this while they were depending on ODBC and JDBC, and that's what they were like, you know, adhering to. So that's really where Aeroflight SQL, ODBC, and JDBC driver come into play. So that's another thing that, so basically, these are the drivers that are built using the Aeroflight SQL protocol, but these are like the ODBC and JDBC drivers. So Let's talk a bit about that. So they are ODBC, uh, they are basically ODBC and JDBC drivers uh, built on top of Flight SQL libraries, and you know that, that's kind of like a single driver, and and that well basically simplifies everything. You don't have to implement the code again or those kind of things. Okay, and that bridges the gap between ODBC and JDBC interface. And the nice thing here is that the drivers will work with any ODBC or JDBC client without really having to make that code change, right? You know. So that's valid for BI tool, but it's also true for any application that you might be writing. For example, in a Jupyter notebook, you might be using Python or something to do that. So you don't have to change a code for that. You know, it's already there with this particular drivers. And both of these drivers are completely made open source, you know, which is fairly rare, like for ODBC and JDBC driver. So we've developed both of these things here at Dremio, and we have our open source stream, and we contributed to the Arrow open source project. So let's take a look at the traditional ODBC and JDBC kind of thing and Aeroflight SQL from two perspectives, driver management and performance. So for the driver management, for the traditional ODBC and JDBC, you just need to, in, you basically need to install and manage a driver for each database with traditional ones. However, with Flight SQL, what that happens is you just need to install and manage one single driver, and that's all. That's all you need to do. In terms of the performance, obviously traditional is like row-based transfer mostly, uh, and even if it's not, even if it's ODBC, it's sometimes like you have to convert it on the client side. So it is fine for a small amount of data, but when it's like larger volume of data, you might want to look for something like Flight SQL, which has this columnar benefits and everything. Okay. So should you use this new driver every single time, right? That's the question. Like, why would I use my Flight SQL driver? Why not? I'm already into ODBC and JDBC for my access and everything. Why should I use this? Well, it's generally preferable to have a native Flight SQL application and actually use the native interfaces here. A, because it's easier to harness those feature features like multiple endpoints and parallelism and those kind of stuff. But it also gives better performance that we talked about. So if we kind of look at this diagram quickly, like I you know, have a couple less minutes here, but if you see in this first example, the database is column based, right? But the client is row based. Okay, so in this case, maybe it makes sense to use the old ODBC and JDBC driver, you know, and because like, you know, there might be things like conversion and stuff. So that, that can be on one scenario. But if the client is columnar, well, in the second case, with ODBC and JDBC, we are converting it from columnar over the wire to just row, right? And then you have to go back to columnar again because the client is columnar, right? So this is, again, an unnecessary serialization thing that we're kind of avoiding in the first place. So that's where Flight SQL, ODBC, and JDBC driver shines. So if you look at this particular stack, generally the way to think about it is if you have a legacy client, such as old BI tools that just needs to get some data or is row-based, that's where you're going to use this new ODBC and JDBC drivers of our flight. However, if you have a SQL native client, that's where you want to do something like Flight SQL. So if you're running something like SQL from a Python code, there's native client for Flight SQL, so you might want to use that. And if you're not doing anything with SQL, like you're not connected to any databases or stuff, you can just use like Aeroflight natively as a protocol. So to end this particular presentation, I want you to take this mental picture because it might be a bit confusing like with Aero and Aeroflight and Aeroflight SQL. Basically, Aeroflight is the columnar in memory format that basically, you know, speeds up everything and, you know, helps in memory transfers. But Aeroflight is basically the client server framework that helps you transfer that Aero data, that, that columnar format data. And Aeroflight SQL is a protocol. It's kind of a protocol to interact with the databases, right? You still need to con contact with the databases. So that's kind of a full stack solution. So that is pretty much all. And, you know, I, you know, you can reach out to me even externally and after the session, but, you know, I'm open to any questions that you might have. Thank you so much.